recorded live at our IPW podcast studio in Los Angeles, California. Welcome to Brand USA Talks Travel. This is your all access pass to hear from top industry leaders exploring the vital topics and exciting prospects shaping travel in 2024 and beyond. Now, here's your host, Mark Lapidus. During your foreign service assignments, did your friends all think you were a spy? Of course. Were you a spy? Never. <laughs> I'm joined by Brooke Werenberg, the Outreach and Inquiries Chief for the Department of State's Visa Office. Before joining the Department of State, Brooke worked as an attorney in Chicago and in refugee resettlement in Minneapolis. Brooke, you've had a pretty varied career. Which has been the most fun for you? I have loved every posting, even my first one being Nuevo Laredo. I didn't know where that was before. I don't know where it is. Where is it? It's across from Laredo, Texas. It's our largest land border crossing between the United States and Mexico. So all of the cargo is coming through Nuevo Laredo to Laredo, Texas. Wow, who knew? I certainly didn't. Tell me what your office does. So the visa office supports all of our consulates and embassies overseas with their visa operations, setting policies and providing support to our officers who adjudicate the visas. And so since last year's IPW, you guys have been very busy. Tell me what you've been doing. We have. 2023 was a record-breaking year for us. We issued over 10.4 million visas. So my colleagues in our consulates and embassies overseas have been working incredibly hard. And when you say record-breaking, you mean forever? Well, the last time I think was 2008. So it has been quite a while. But right now, in the first half of 2024, we have issued nearly 5.2 million non-immigrant visas, which which breaks our all-time half-year issuance record. I should know this, but how long do these visas last? Most visas last 10 years, so that's a lot of visits to the United States. It certainly is, and I guess people have to really plan in advance when their visas are about to expire, because as I've learned the hard way, you can't travel without one, or if your passport's about to expire within the year, it's difficult to travel. That's true, but you'd be surprised to know that more people can travel to the United States now than ever before in history. There are, between Canada and the 41 countries that are part of the Visa Waiver Program, I think there's some 49 million people who can travel to the United States. So have there been some innovations or policies in the processing that made that application process more efficient using artificial intelligence? Like, how did you do it? We have two highlights that I'd like to share with you. One is interview waiver. Now, what is that? Yeah, what is that, Brooke? That's the ability for someone who has traveled before on a visa to get a new one without setting foot in a consulate or an embassy. This is a win for those visa holders because they don't have to come back in and a win for us because we are able to move their applications quickly and we are able to make space for the first-time applicants who need the interview at our consulates. Okay, so take me backstage here for a second and tell me how you figure that out. The individuals who've had a visa before, we go and look to make sure they've been good travelers. We reuse their biometrics. Those are those fingerprints that we have on file. And if everything looks good to go, we issue them a new visa without the interview. So the National Travel and Tourism Strategy has a goal of 90 million visitors by 2026. I've heard several people mention this just in the last couple of days here at IPW. How are we going to get there? The State Department is 100% behind this initiative. First, as I said, the majority of visitors to the U.S. are from Canada and our 41 visa waiver program countries. So we're well on our way on that front. Second, we're preparing for increase for visa demand in Asia. It has been slow to recover post-pandemic, but we are prioritizing staffing in China, and we're anticipating the anniversary of the 10-year visa in November of 2024. So the 10-year visa was introduced in November of 2014. The 10 years oh, coming even I up can here. Do math. <laughs> And we will be ready for it. We've already seen an increase on that front. In the first half of fiscal year 2024, we've issued over 266,000 non-immigrant visas in China. And that's three times as many visas as we issued this time last year. 
And third, we're also ready for international sports tourism. You know, we are looking forward to the United States together with Mexico and Canada co-hosting the Men's 2026 World Cup and, of course, the 2028 Olympics here in Los Angeles. I have to put in a plug. Anybody who is looking forward to those events and doesn't have a visa, apply now. You'll get your visa in plenty of time to enjoy those events and visit the United States a few more times between now and then. Aside from utilizing Brand USA, how do you get the word out about that? We rely on our partners here at the U.S. travel and tourism industry. We are working with our U.S. government agencies, and all of our embassies and consulates are overseas advocating for visitors to come to the United States. Brooke, tell me how local destinations and travel industry partners that you're mentioning right now can help support all of your efforts. We want them to share with the message that the U.S. visa process is transparent and easy, and you only go through it once every 10 years in most countries. And we are their partners. If they have questions or concerns, they can reach out to us. We, coming out of the pandemic, we realize that U.S. industry sometimes needs that help in communicating how visitors can get here, and they can reach out to us at our business visa center. All that's available online, I take it? Yes. What role does technology play in streamlining your process? I kind of joked about artificial intelligence before, but are you exploring that? Well, one of our biggest advantages we've gained from these advanced interview waiver authorities, that is the renewal of visas without the interview, is that we are able to move this work around. In Washington, D.C., we have a special remote processing division that is responsible for adjudicating these cases that don't need an interview. And that frees up our time and our officers' time overseas to focus on the first-time applicants and reduce wait times around the world. How long does a typical interview take? It depends. That's the State Department answer for all of these. Our officers give every interview the attention that they need to make the determination that this is a qualified traveler. These are national security decisions, but we know how everybody wants to come here. And what's the latest with facial recognition? How are people feeling about that? I know there's a plus side and a negative side. And does state have an official position on this yet, or are you still working on it? We don't have an official position on it. You know, we will incorporate all the tools at our disposal to make sure we can make efficient national security decisions. Tell me about domestic renewal. So we've heard a lot of demand from U.S. industry for their workers to be able to renew their visas here in the United States without having to travel to their home country to go to a consulate or an embassy and have an interview there. And we want to reduce the uncertainty that businesses have about how long they would have an employee outside the United States while renewing their visa. So we successfully launched a domestic renewal pilot for certain eligible travelers. Specifically, we focused on H-1Bs. And we had over 2,400 companies in 40 states participate in this pilot. And these employees were able to renew their visas here in the U.S. without an interview and without departing. And this is a win for them for convenience, but it's also a win for all of our applicants overseas because we're freeing up space at our interview windows overseas for the first time visa applicant. So what do you consider the top four markets and what are the wait times in those markets? So our top four issuing missions are Mexico, India, Brazil, and Colombia. And we have made significant progress in reducing our wait times across the board. In India, our wait time has dropped 70%. And in Brazil, the wait time has dropped 85%. Now, we're still issuing record numbers of visas in these post two. Mission India issued 15% more visas over pre-pandemic 2019. Mission Brazil issued 80% more visas over pre-pandemic 2019. 
Mission Mexico issued nearly 65% more visitor visas over pre-pandemic 2019. And I kid you not, Mission Colombia issued 130% more visas over pre-pandemic 2019. So Brooke, what's the magic sauce? Like, what did you do that made the difference? It's that elbow grease combined with the ability to waive interviews. Ah, got it. Brooke, you've taught me a lot about visas. I always learn something new every time I do one of these, and I want to thank you for stopping by. I want to thank Brand USA and our U.S. tourism partners here for all the work they do with us to help make the U.S. traveler experience that much better. And what website do people visit if they want to learn more? travel.state.gov. We're here for you. And that's it for today for Brand USA Talks Travel, live from Los Angeles, California. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks very much for listening. If you enjoyed this Live from IPW episode, please share it with your friends in the travel industry. Production and music by Asher Mirovich, media producer, Thonze Karaoke, with assistance from Casey D'Ambra, engineering, Brian Watkins, Kat Palmer, and Antonio Tyler. Art by Mimi Jung. Special thanks to Peter Dodge and Colleen Mangone. More live from IPW episodes coming soon. Safe travels.